State versus Gary Barker, 18-81. Barker's outside of this. Okay. You want brought in now? Please. Possession of controlled substances and paraphernalia. Another charge. Judge, this was a case that we had in front of you two weeks ago that we entered pleas. However, we had the same plea statement signed twice. This corrects that. I have reviewed all this with Mr. Barker, and he understands the confusion and, and is in agreement to enter this plea. Okay. You're supposed to do the plea again? So. Correct. Okay. Sir. Mr. Barker, I'm looking at a plea statement here. Have you gone over this, sir? Yes, sir. And do you understand what's in this document? Yes, sir. Do you understand the, the charges against you and the range of penalties if you convict? Yes, sir. Are you pleading guilty to possession of methamphetamine? The purpose to deliver? Yes, sir. Possession of drug paraphernalia, a class D felony? Yes, sir. Possession of marijuana with purpose to deliver? Yes, sir. Uh, possession of hydrocodone with purpose to deliver? Yes, sir. Possession of drug paraphernalia, a B felony? Yes, sir. Is proximity to certain facilities? Being all prost. It doesn't say that, but is that right? That yes, is correct. Sir. Okay. I'm going to mark through that. Please. Like. Possession of cocaine. Yes, sir. Simultaneous possession of drugs and firearms. Yes, sir. And possession of a defaced firearm. Yes, sir. Okay. What happened here? You know, this arises out of a probation and parole officer uh, compliance visit on uh, February the 7th of this year at 328 West North Street here in Mountain Home, Arkansas. Uh, upon arrival at this residence, uh, the defendant was located in the front bedroom and within the, within the residence that Mr. Barker shared with his mother, Val Valerie Hodges, uh, investigators were able to find multiple bags containing crystal meth uh, methamphetamine, marijuana, smoking pipes with narcotic residue, uh, multiple, well, I guess that's not uh, they found uh, multiple bags with crystal methamphetamine baggies, red unidentified pills, uh, new bags for distribution, bags with pills identified as hydrocodone, used syringes, ecstasy, uh, $8,832 in cash. They also found a uh, one bag with white powdered substance cocaine, one bag with 19 bags of marijuana amounting to 163 grams multiple smoking devices with narcotic residue, numerous loaded syringes, baggies used for distribution, digital scales, and one Janine uh, uh, pistol, the caliber of which I'm, is not stated in this affidavit, with the serial number that has been removed in close proximity to the controlled substances. Is this true? Yes, sir. This time, sir, accept your plea and judge you guilty. Possession of methamphetamine with purpose to deliver your sentence to 10 years in the Department of Corrections. Possession of drug paraphernalia, deep felony, six years in the Department of Corrections. Possession of marijuana with purpose to deliver, 10 years in the Department of Corrections. Possession of hydrocodone with purpose to deliver, <coughs> 10 years in the Department of Corrections. Possession of drug paraphernalia, deep felony, 10 years in the Department of Corrections. Possession of cocaine, six years in the Department of Corrections. For simultaneous possession of drugs and firearms, ten years in the Department of Corrections. Possession of a defaced firearm, since to six years in the Department of Corrections. We pay two hundred dollars in cost, two thousand dollar fine, a DNA fee of two fifty, twenty dollar booking fee, drug crime assessment of one twenty five. Pay what you owe at a minimum rate of $100 per month beginning within 60 days after your release from incarceration. And you make your payments to the Sheriff's Department here in Boone County. Baxter, Baxter County. I'm still in Boone County. Mm -hmm. Started four. your day there. I'll be in Boone County tomorrow. Yeah. Good luck. <coughs> Ellen is Gressy, is that correct? 18478. Terroristic threatening, harassing communications, resisting arrest. Good morning. Good morning. Who's your lawyer, ma'am? 
Judge Crane. He's supposed to be coming back down to speak with you. I just okay. spoke with him in his office. All right, here he is. Right Your here. Honor, I have visited with her. I have not been retained in the case, but she's supposed to be arraigned today. I advised her to enter a plea of not guilty and okay. have it set over for a hearing. She will need to have a bond set. Okay. Uh, we'll enter a plea of not guilty. Is that agreeable, ma'am? Yes, sir. Okay, and I'll have you appear before Judge Webb on November 15th, 9 o'clock, and let me see if she has a bond. I paid a bond first. Uh, it was 6000 and I paid six thirty, and I have a second bond that they gave me of 1000 which I'm ready to pay the 10% today. Okay. It looks like this one's set at 5000 That's fine. I can pay that today, too. All right. All right. If she can bond out, Judge, she can come by my office and make she, further arrangements. It looks like she's already made a bond in this case. She, she did in one case, and then she was oh. arrested on a separate misdemeanor harassment charge, I'm, I'm told. It was an order to revoke her bond, her old bond, she entered on November the 7th, 2018. Hmm. My paperwork says November 6th. Okay. Well, at any rate, you appear before Judge Webb on November 15th. Yes, sir. Thank you. We leave the bond set so she can make well, bond. Judge. Judge Webb revoked her bond. Oh, okay. Uh, speak with him about it. All right. So. All right, so she'll remain in jail until we can get a hold of Judge Webb. Thank He's you. He's here today. Yes, yeah. thank you. Okay. You may stand aside. Michael Barron's 18477 forgery theft. Judge, the public defender, the public defender's office represents Mr. Barron's in a matter uh, CR 18-403, which is also on your docket. I guess the rules require Michael to fill out a new application, so we'll rep so we can represent him on on this new case. Uh, is there any way we can get both cases ran together? Uh, hold on, we're fixing to get to that. Judge, his his eighteen four zero three is set for trial April first of twenty nineteen. We'd enter a formal reading. We'd waive a formal reading of the charges, enter a plea if not guilty, and ask that these cases run together for purposes of adjudication. Very well. We'll send out a scheduling order. That all right. Okay. So I need to uh, fill out the public defender's papers again? That's correct. Okay. And is there any way I could speak with my attorney <coughs> appointed already? I don't know who that is. Who Judge, is it'll be you? me going forward, and Mr. Barron's, I'll get out I'll get out there to see you here in the next few days. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Benjamin Matthews, 18476. Terroristic threatening, several counts, harassing <coughs> communication. Do you have a Good lawyer, sir? Good morning, Your Honor. Do, uh, what's that, Your Honor? Do you have a lawyer? Um, I have the paperwork. I wasn't able to get a, a counselor to talk to me yet. Okay. Well, your case is before Judge Webb. I'll have you appear on uh, November 15th at 9 a.m. for an attorney status and to enter a plea. Okay, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. You may stand aside. Tina Snyder. 18471 residential burglary theft of property judge of the court notes she is set down for reappearance today i haven't had an opportunity to visit with her due to my recent taking over of this job if the court just leave her on could did she fill out a public defender's application yes she did you have been appointed. Okay, well, there's nothing to be done. We've scheduled it out. So. Okay, you may stand aside, ma'am. Thank you. I was wanting to know if I can get a bond reduction. From what I see here, ma'am, no, I'm going to leave it where it's at. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Matt Davis, 18465, forgery, theft. Judge, we've been recently appointed to represent Mr. Davis. So I think he's appearing for arraignment. Does he enter a plea of not guilty? He does. We'd waive a formal reading of the charges in her plea of not guilty. All right. 
Does the file reflect that a bond's been set, Your Honor? Look. In the new case, it's $2,500. $2,500. Is that what it is case. in this case? He's got three cases. $2,500. He's got 15000 in there. Well, second. apparently that there's three cases. Now that was reduced to 5000 and then this one is 2000 But it may have been reduced. Oh. No, it was 10000 10000 So he's got about 17 Apparently, bonds have already been set, Judge. Okay, you may stand aside, sir. Thank you. Michael Wood, 18 72, Jackson County, Mississippi. Bond number 172475. Okay. Looks like there was a trial that was scheduled in August and there was a failure to appear. I think we just need a new trial date. Can we get can we do this today? If we if we judge there's a plea offer in the file, if we could transport him, I'd review it with him to see if we could resolve right. it. We'll transport you to the courthouse, sir. Okay, we'll transport you to the courthouse. You can stand aside. Michael Glavish, 18486, battery, charge. Do you have a lawyer, sir? Uh, no, sir, I have not. Okay. But, um, um, I've, I've been doing very compliant with my probation and officer and all that stuff. And um, I just got a job. Um, and I've been taking care of my grandmother, who's got Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, I'm, I'm clean. Okay. I haven't been doing drugs or nothing. Okay, this uh, this is on a new charge, though, sir. And yes, sir. We need to get you a lawyer. Are you going to hire a lawyer or make application to the public defender's office? I'm probably going to have to make a case to the public defender's office because I don't have the funds to pay okay. for a lawyer at the moment. All right. Your case is before Judge Gordon Webb. He'll be here on November 15th at, at 9 a.m., and I'm going to order that you appear before him on that date. Um, may I ask for a bond reduction? Well, hold on a minute. This gentleman has a pending revocation. It hasn't been signed. Oh, yet. they tell me they're, they're going fi to file a revocation on you, so it, it wouldn't well, what, is, what, what does that mean? That means you you must be on probation, and they're going to file a petition to revoke that. That's what they're telling me. I, I don't know anything about it, but that's what it sounds like. So you wouldn't want to waste money on a bond and just get picked up when you went out the jailhouse doors. Okay. But, so, but I, so well, you probably have a bond. Let me see here. You probably have a bond of some well, sort. They told me that my bond was $5,000. Okay. Well, but you're have, doing the Act 570 on me. Right now, they're, they're, you are under a 570? That's what they said. Wait, well, okay. But let's get you, get the lawyer first, sir. That, that'll help that because it doesn't sound like you're going anywhere for a little while anyway. So. But it said that the X 570 be five to ten days or something like that. Yeah, maybe. It'll give you time to get you a lawyer. But can I get a bond reduction until uh, so not, that, that time comes up? Let's not worry about up? that, sir. You're coming back to court next Thursday, a week from today. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you know anything about Tyler Sutterfield, why, why he's in jail? I believe uh, his probation officers brought him in. I believe they're going to try and do a revocation. Okay. Okay, they're going to work on that. Well, has he had a uh, 8.1 hearing, do you know? You he know? has not, sir. Well, give it to him. We'll just do one of those. Mr. Sutterfield, I'm looking at a petition here, which is prosecution intends to to file to attempt to revoke your probationary period or suspended sentence. You have a right to remain silent. You have a right to an attorney. You can't afford an attorney to make application to the public defender's office. And if you qualify, we'll uh, appoint an attorney to represent you. And while you're in jail, subject to the regulations of the Sheriff's Department, you have a right to communicate with your family, friends, and your attorney. And, um. I guess I, since this has not yet been filed, does, does 
has he been charged with the battery? You know. Judge, I am sorry. I do third, not third degree battery in violation of a, a no contact order. What kind of bond would you suggest or something? Like that? Five thousand dollars. I'll set a uh, five thousand dollar bond on you, sir. And thank you, sir. And when you, I, I tend to go to rehab when I get out of here. That's good. So, all right. I'll order that you appear on uh, November 15th at 9 a.m. before Judge Webb regarding this revocation. Your Honor, I would like that $5,000 there be no contact with the alleged victim. That. That'll be a condition of the bond, no contact with the alleged victim. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Marvin Ritchie, 18469. <coughs> Possession of drug paraphernalia, if control I substances. Yes, sir. Your Honor, we'd waive a formal reading of the charges and enter a plea of not guilty. Okay, we'll enter that plea of not guilty, and if we haven't already, we'll schedule the matter for appearance and hearing. Very well. May he be excused? Yes. Stay in touch. Samuel Neri, 18-217, controlled substances, paraphernalia, drugs and firearms, other charges. Judge, this is Mr. Cooper's case as, as, uh, as private counsel. Uh -huh. I believe this man is in Blytheville today. Okay. I think he's given some indication to the state about this. Mr. Cooper has. Uh, my. Uh, talk to me, Judge. This man, this man failed to appear on June 28th. I don't um, remember the specifics, but it says the defendant is ordered to appear on 11 8 18 or the court will issue a warrant. It was there? I don't remember. Don't know because when you called the last time he wasn't here and you gave Mr. Cooper time to find him oh. to get him here. I spoke to Mark this morning. He said he wasn't, he wasn't going to appear. He's not going to appear. He he, is that your extent of your knowledge? Yes, Judge, it is. Hey, this warrant you'll issue bond forth to give notes to surety if one exists. Mitchell Smithy, 18459. Four, <coughs> excuse me, 459. Terroristic threatening, domestic battery, several other charges. A list wants to list you bond forfeit. Give notice to any surety. Christina Walters, 18101, drug case. Judge, I had asked for this matter to be set for a suppression hearing today. I, I put right. the cart before the horse a little bit talk with the state there are a few other items of evidence that we haven't been able to to receive she is set for trial next week what I would ask to do I'll file a short motion to continue both and we'll take the time until we get this additional information very well Patricia Kuyper 18-153 control substances Mrs. Kuyper is present uh, she's here today for a plea deadline at this point uh, just She's got done visiting with the prosecutor. Uh, we'll leave as scheduled at this point. If we can come to a resolution, uh, we'll request to get on the December 6th docket before the trial date. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. When is the trial? 12 8. Oh, okay. Very well. Thank you. Joshua Brotherton, 18483, theft of property. Do you have a lawyer, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to hire a lawyer? This matter? should all be resolved. This is a misunderstanding. Okay. Uh, if I knew it, I supposedly stole. Well, let me see. Is it alleged he stole a vehicle? Yes, as well as the keys to the vehicle. Yeah, this will be resolved. Okay. Yeah. This is all Terry Johnson's fantasy stuff. Okay. Well, uh, his fantasy might put you in the pen for up to six years. So you might, you I'm pleading not guilty. Uh, that's what I'd do. We're good. Yeah. Do you want to hire a lawyer or make application to the public defender's office? I think I'm fine, sir. You want to proceed on your own? I don't think I need one. <clears throat> well... Why are you? I'd have me a lawyer, but you can do as you please. I'll fill out an application. That's what I'd do. And I'll we'll call you later, okay? We'll call your name later. Get, they'll give you an application. 
Ryan yes, sir. Winnick. 14481. Come forward, sir. You have a lawyer, sir? Uh, not at the moment, but I'm in the process of getting one. You're going to hire a lawyer? Sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Charge of possession of controlled substances and driving a vehicle without tags. Can we go ahead and enter a plea of not guilty? Not guilty, yes. Okay, we'll enter the plea of not guilty, and I'll have you come back on uh, December 6th, 10 o'clock, for attorney status. Okay. okay. Thank you. Can I uh, also go ahead and just fill out one of the papers for an attorney? Well, yeah. Just in case it doesn't work out. That's a good idea. I'll recall you, your name. Let, they'll give you an application. Lawrence Walls, 18482. Possession of controlled substances. Good morning, sir. Who represents you, sir? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a buy a lawyer. I'm get a lawyer. Okay. All right. Uh, your case is before another judge, J Judge uh, Gordon Webb. He'll be here on November 15th at 9 a.m. So appear on that date for attorney status and arraignment. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Cole Nelson, 18479. Cole Nelson in the courtroom. Alice Warchelis, bond forfeit. Give notes to the surety. Do we know anything about Mr. Honing's case? 18475. Okay, thank you. Anthony Honings. We'd waive a formal reading of the charges in her plea of not guilty. Okay, so we'll enter that plea. For breaking, earning, and theft, several counts, criminal mischief, controlled substances. Okay, we'll, uh, if we haven't already done so, we'll schedule the matter out. Send you a copy. Very well. Okay. Thank you. Brianna Cothran, 18 55, theft by receiving, controlled substances, drugs, and firearms. Your Honor, another case that in my discussions with, with Mr. Chisholm this morning, there's a, a there's a few there's a few more pieces of evidence that we don't have. It was set for a suppression hearing today, trial next week, and we'll file a motion to continue. Very good. Some photographs of no, pictures. Just found out about and when you well, in, what now? She she said, for trial in December. Okay. If we could judges next your next day here is the sixth. I have a matter in Harrison that day. If maybe go ahead and have a reset for the 6th, Mr. Bunch and I will coordinate on how to resolve it. All right, that's what we'll do. Therese Thacker, 17331, also has 18464. Judge, since we've kind of filled up the revocation docket for this afternoon or after the break, if we could have her come back on December 6th. For hearing and resolution. Are both cases but, but, Yes, Judge. Very yeah, well. The ones in four is Judge it's in Judge Webb's court? Yeah. 18464? Yes, yes, sir. Do, do you know when? Uh, she's supposed to appear in March, March 21st of 19. Okay. Let, let me look at this. Okay. So it, it, it is not a revocation. No, it's a new okay. Case. All right. So 17331 is a revocation. Okay. So it'll be on December 6th. 6th, yes, Judge. 10 o'clock. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Stay.